Extreme heat is suffocating Colorado, but don't sweat it. A cool down is on the way. There's a cold front coming. I'll let you know when the cooler air will arrive. Would you say these pay out better than the casinos? Yeah. Adult arcades getting around Colorado's rigid betting rules. Tonight, Denver 7 Investigates continues its dive into gray casinos. Biggest concern, I think, is they are starting to expand. And the new calls for action coming from the top of the state's gaming division. It's not a safe, regulated legal market. Plus, jobs are growing, but so are interest rates and inflation. The U.S. economy is in a very strange push-pull situation. Tonight, we're cutting through the noise when it comes to the economy and how you can navigate the uncertainty. If we do enter a recession, it will be one unlike we've seen in other cycles before. A heat advisory for the Front Range has just ended, but this scorcher of a weekend is just getting started. Good evening and thank you for watching Denver 7 News on Local 3. I'm Jessica Porter. I'm Shannon Ogden. Glad you're with us. And we are in for a, another sizzling day, but there is some relief on the way. And with those details, Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson joins us. We fell just short of 100, Mike. We got to 98 here. Yay, we missed it. Uh, 100, though, up the road at Fort Collins and Greeley and out east at Lyman. Look at 103 at Burlington, La Hunt at 104. Even out west, 103 degrees at Grand Junction. Right now, the temperatures are starting to drop back a little bit. It's a mere 97 at Grand Junction. We're 89 still at this hour, and it's still 90 degrees at Greeley and out at Burlington. There are really not very many showers, a couple of minor little scattered storms, but there is a hope off to the northwest. This cold front is moving our way. It arrives here late tomorrow afternoon with showers and thunderstorms and cooler weather coming in, not just for Sunday, but I think for much of next week. So one more really hot day tomorrow. Storms come in late tomorrow afternoon, cooler with storms on Sunday and a cooler wetter weather pattern coming our way for next week. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Mike. Fire crews out on the West Slope are getting a handle on a fire burning near Parachute, about 45 miles east of Grand Junction. So take a look at this video. You can see how close the fire got to some homes there. Several neighborhoods were forced to evacuate. Now, as of 4.30, that is the last update. The Garfield County Sheriff's Office said no homes had been lost, but some fences and some electrical poles had been damaged. With those high temperatures returning tomorrow, the city of Denver is opening cooling centers to help get you a break from the heat. Now we've compiled a list of locations offering services along with some tips on how to keep your cool over on our website, thedenverchannel.com. And you can always get the latest weather forecasts right on the Denver 7 Plus app. You can also get your weather for your neighborhood 24-7 on thedenverchannel.com. New jobs numbers from the state of Colorado today show the only unemployment rate fell to 3.4 percent in June. That is the lowest we have seen since the pandemic began. However, there are many concerning economic trends as well. June also saw the lowest consumer confidence in more than a year as historic inflation continues. So what does it all mean for our economy? Denver 7's Rob Harris tries to make sense of this complicated issue. We have a lot of headlines flying at us about the economy and they can be at odds with each other. On the one hand, Colorado just released jobs numbers that are really good, a good sign for the economy. But on the other hand, we have super high inflation and the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to try to control it. That's a bad sign for the economy. If we do enter a recession or we're in one already, it will be one unlike any we've experienced in recent cycles. This is Caleb Silver, editor in chief for Investopedia. He acknowledges it can be hard to sift through the noise of the headlines and get a good grasp of what's going on in our pandemic affected economy. Where we're facing rising inflation up above 9%, where everything from food and energy to rent keeps rising, but the jobs market, the labor market remains very strong and consumers are hanging in there. We've never had a situation quite like this where demand Demand remains very, very strong while prices remain sky high. It's a really interesting dynamic. That interesting dynamic was on full display out on 16th Street Mall, where there were plenty of people shopping and eating. I think I'm excited that we survived all of that and I, we don't feel affected by it. But there was also anxiety for what could lay down the road. I've lost confidence. I was in the stock market a couple of years ago and I'm completely out. And I'm a retired guy, so. I have to live with that money. I'm not spending any money. We're going to do things that we already had planning to do, but not, we're not buying cars. <laughs> <laughs> As it turns out, this could all be the most important sign because there's one metric that Investopedia pays attention to above the rest for economic outlook. 
consumer spending. And there are signs it could be slowing down. The consumers start to pull back and start to tighten their belts because they either fear a recession or they feel that they're already in one personally. Then you're going to see businesses start to rein in spending as well, which would mean less hiring, which would mean less expansion. And that could really accelerate a recession. For Denver 7, I'm Rob Harris. So what should we do as we watch all this data come in? Well, Silver says as we see the economy slowing and we don't know how long it will last, well, we should each have enough cash on hand to for at least six months. Um, also pay down any credit card debt you might have as these interest rates keep rising. Denver 7 is committed to 360 in-depth reporting on the economy, so we want to hear what's impacting you, your family, and your business. Is it monthly housing costs, rising grocery costs, child care? And if you've found a cool way to stretch every dollar, we want to hear about that too. You can email 360 at thedenverchannel.com. We read every single email you send. Boulder police want to hear from any witnesses of a violent attack on the city's bike path yesterday. Boulder police say it happened near 13th and Arapahoe about 1245. They say a man grabbed a 75 year old woman by the hair and threw her to the ground. A passerby was able to pull the man off and hold him until police arrived. Police arrested 24 year old James Moore for this attack. They say he has no known ties to Boulder. If you saw anything, please call police. Denver's district attorney has formally charged the man Denver police shot at this weekend in a crowd in downtown. 21-year-old Jordan Waddy faces three counts of possession of a weapon by a previous offender and one count of third-degree assault. The three officers who shot at Waddy while also injuring six innocent bystanders are still on paid administrative leave. The DA is still reviewing if the officer's actions that night were legally justified. A lawsuit's been filed against the Episcopal Diocese of Colorado for child sex abuse. Lawyers representing a Colorado man allege former Reverend Jerry McKenzie abused the victim starting when the victim was 16 years old back in the 1990s. The victim says he knows of other victims of McKenzie and hopes this lawsuit will lead to more of them coming forward. Now, McKenzie was forced to resign in 2000 following allegations of sexual misconduct. The diocese has responded to the lawsuit saying their prayers go out to the victims. We'll be working to, to get this grain market out of Colorado. They have several names. Some call them adult gaming arcades. Others call them gray casinos. But however you label these secret gaming locations, state and local lawmakers want them shut down. Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski with the latest. The move follows a Denver 7 hidden camera investigation. And now there's a call for action from the state's gaming division. Our hidden cameras expose how secret casino style gambling is happening all over the state. It's happening outside the three mountain towns where voters approved legal gambling. Some of these so-called gray casinos use cryptocurrency to possibly skirt state gambling laws. Those laws ban operators from allowing their machines to pay out cash prizes. We showed our undercover video to the head of the state's gaming division. Are they legal? I think in most cases they're probably not legal. And that's the heart of this issue. State leaders are trying to determine if, in fact, these gray casinos are legal. We'll have much more on what the state is doing tonight on Denver 7 News at 10. We'll also tell you how the city of Aurora is trying to shut down this kind of gambling. I'm Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski. The brutal heat means summer costs are soaring. Last uh, July and August, our uh, heating bills were running in the 340 to 360 range because we keep our house very cold. But a new model is giving Coloradans a climate-friendly alternative. I think the biggest thing uh, that's really driven people's interest in solar is the declining cost. Next, we're going 360 in-depth on solar co-ops, what it takes to get involved and how much you can save. A lot of times we see savings of anywhere from 10 to 15 percent. And a group of Denver men on a mission to help others. Now they're the ones getting some support. No one told me. I was just expected to come in and say, What's up? What am I doing?